with the current pandemic, why is it so important for us to understand history? Well, uh, you know, I mean, I, I guess, and the pandemic is such an unusual thing. You know, we had one that killed over 100,000 people in the late 1950s, and then the giant one back in 1919 and all that. But there were several waves of that. And, of course, go all the way back to the Black Plague and everything. You know, it's such an unusual event. And in each case, it's been handled differently by leadership, by individuals. Um, so, you know, those things are hard to predict. I mean, the only thing you know for sure is that you can count on change. As I drove over here in the 1970s, I was a department store buyer for a Dallas department store called Sanger Harris. And uh, that was the, by far the biggest uh, number one in the market. Uh, it was the fastest growing division of what was called Federated Department Stores, renamed Macy's later. And their best store was at a shopping center called Valley View Mall. And right down that the store did uh, uh, well over $50 million a year in the 1970s. It was one of the highest volume, most profitable branch suburban department stores in America. Well, I just drove by and it's demolished. And man, the only, and to me it's yesterday, you know, the 70s. Um, it's going on 50 years, hard to believe. But the thing is, the only thing you can count on is change. Now, in general, what I would say when you study all that, because the Great Depression and even our Great Recession of 08, but there were a lot of others in 1901, 1893 um, that uh, people forget about. Um, uh, 1921 was a real bad one, uh, destroyed a lot of the auto industry, people don't realize. Um, usually things come back to normal more than people expect. You know, we get jolted. I, I was, I had written my first book uh, and was going to do an autographing at the World Trade Center. There was a Borders bookstore there in the, in the base of the complex. And I was scheduled to do it in October of 2001. Plans changed. But I remember I finally got up there a few months later. I did an interview at the uh, NASDAQ Stock Exchange. And, and they're all saying, will anybody ever rent an office in a high rise in New York again? Will people ever come back to New York City? Will it ever be the same? And I said, it'll come back stronger than ever. That was not, a lot, most people weren't saying that. Uh, it's much like, I can go back to the early 90s, let's say, Hoover's was an early leader in going online under my, my business partner and friend, Patrick Spain, really made it a success, created Hoover's.com, we'd been a book publisher. And I would give speeches and say, look, most of the great companies of the internet aren't born yet. And they said, well, yeah, but how can anybody compete with Yahoo? How can anybody ever compete with AOL? They own it. And now, I just had lunch with a friend of mine. He's like, oh, Amazon and Google, they're all so powerful. They can buy any little company they want. They're, they're running the table, you know, to use a metaphor. And I'm like, ooh, well, let's hold on a minute. <laughs> you know, let's step back. So, um, no, these things come and go. They, they follow cycles. Uh, American people are great. The world economy is great. It'll, the long-term trend is uh, increasing wealth for everybody on Earth. There have been dramatic increase, de decreases in the number of people living in poverty worldwide. Uh, the biggest change has been in China, where you know, maybe a billion people or whatever have come out of poverty. Uh, but it's all over the world. Brazil, you and I both love Mexico. I spend as much time as possible down there. I've been to Indonesia several times. Um, uh, and, uh, and the United States. We have challenges as a more mature, older economy uh, competing in an ever-changing world. But um, no, I, uh, in general, I would say things will come more back to norm. But, but there clearly will be changes. All these people have never tried work at home. You know, now some companies are already doing it, but they try it now. I've talked to a lot of people, I'm sure you have too. Hey, about half the people I talk to, nope, this ain't working. We gotta be in the office. And about half the people I talk to, oh, it's wonderful. Yeah. I get more done. And you can find surveys online that say the same kind of thing, or at least very deep splits, even if not 50-50. Right. Uh, education. Uh, I, I certainly get a lot of people saying, boy, the online doesn't work as well as I thought. And I've been an educator in many ways, selling books and writing books all my life, and, and had a lot of friends really enthusiastic about online. I, I think in most all those things, the answer is, is going to be a, a hybrid. Right. It's just like all the big brick and mortar retailers realize, hey, we've got to be online. No, they didn't yeah. know. Some were fat early, some were late, some completely blew it. Um, and, and, and now you see Amazon, you know, bought Whole Foods Market. I used to be on their board of directors, a wonderful company. And, uh, and they're building grocery stores and building these little stores. And they've decided, hey, we need bricks and mortar. So uh, most things, I call it omni-channel, I think is the current buzzword. 
but um, on a lot of these things, it'll it'll be a blend. It, it, right. Most things are not. Uh, my uh, seventh grade biology teacher, first day in class, he said, "Students, if there's one thing I want you to learn in this class, is that most things are gray. Few things are black and white in life." And and I, I will never forget that. And and I also think. One of the things you see in political analysis, economic analysis, is a tendency. I've written it up on my website. I also have one called Hoover's World, where everything I've written for years is on there. And what I call false dichotomies. That it's this is it's red or it's blue politically. They're this or they're that. They're left or right. But but well beyond politics and everything. And most it's a spectrum. You know, in many things it's a bell curve. Right. With, with most in the middle and then long tails on both sides. And I'm not just talking politics, but almost uh, many, many things that we observe. And yet journalists and the you know cable news and everybody, they seem to do better with, oh, you two can't get along here, fight, you know? Right. We'll right. get more audience, you know? Yeah, exactly. And, it's like, and, and those people go home, they don't fight, and they go to the same schools and the same country clubs or same stores, whether it's Walmart or Nemo Marcus or Nordstrom's, whatever. Right. So in, in general, thinking in, ter in terms of a spectrum and that there's this complete range with people at all these, you know, you know, analyzing customers the same right. way. Yeah, and, and or any kind of grouping, whether it's racial or gender, anything, you really got to look at the individuals and think about them in a more nuanced way. So thank you.